from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. This is Ag Day. Taking the dairy industry to a whole new level. So we try to make everything as comfortable for our people and as comfortable for our animals as possible. Meet the dairy leaders of today. This was a team, not only one person. Who are keeping production going for tomorrow. Growing up, I always knew I wanted to farm. And I always knew I wanted to be a dairy farmer. We shine a spotlight on dairy this morning on Ag Day. Ag Day, presented by Pioneer. What's next happens when the name on the cap matches the power of one's purpose. Pioneer, what's next happens here. Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. This morning, we want to focus on an industry that's faced difficulties in recent years, including some of the tightest margins on record. We're talking about the dairy industry. Now, the Dairy Margin Coverage Protection Program getting a workout in 2023 with margins in June and July down below $4. And while there are a lot of pressures on the industry, many producers are looking to the future. And that includes winners of awards at this year's Milk Business Conference. Now, we begin our focus on dairy and leaders in the industry with one young producer who is all about keeping a family tradition going. Farm Journal's Tyne Morgan introduces us to Ben Smith of Cool Lawn Farm. On the edge of a bustling and bursting Washington, D.C. There's almost 40,000 cars a day go by the location, which is only two miles from the farm. You'll find a fourth generation dairy farm who ventured to this area in the 1970s to uncover a land of opportunity. I'm the second generation on this farm, but I'm the fourth generation of dairy farmers and Ben will be the fifth generation. Growing and evolving has become the way of life for Coolon LLC. Growing up, I always knew I wanted to farm and I always knew I wanted to be a dairy farmer. Ben interned at dairies across the country while in college, but after graduation, he decided to return home to continue the family's heritage. And I thought it was great for him to be able to come into a progressive herd, but to start on the ground with the grazing operation was a good experience. And it really brought him home to what he has become today, which is a successful dairy farmer. The farm's grazing dairy is where Ben got his feet wet right after college. It was a really good opportunity for me because I had there I was alone. I had the opportunity to, to, to do well, to fail. The dairy is still a 100% registered Holstein herd today, milking 800 cows three times a day. We consolidated herds after we built a new freestall barn. And uh, now what was a grazing dairy is now our dry cow facility. We've grown on the register side to, to marketing genetics and, and selling registered bulls to either AI or other dairymen. We've and grown in grain production. What started as a 200 acre farm now is a thousand acre contiguous block of land and we're crop farming 2,500 acres. The family continued to make improvements to the freestall barn, but the Smiths simply outgrew the space. The building was built in 1967, so it had served its purpose. And today we're milking in a uh, Bowmatic 50 stall rotary. And at just 31 years old, Ben purchased the operation from his parents. My gosh, he's done a lot in the first year. Uh, he expanded the heifer barn or the calf raising facility. Uh, you know, he's he saved us money right off and started going to bulk products. And uh, he built a, a roof over the new bulk products. Ben's keen sense of business quickly became a tool to the farm's progress. Our philosophy is if you're not growing, you're going backwards. So the plan is always to grow, but growth can be a lot of different things. And Ben's plans for the future of this family farm involve more growth and expansion. Ben may be focused on the future, but for this fifth generation farmer, he'll always cherish the past. I've been really, really proud. Um, if I talk too much about it, I will tear up. How proud I've become of a young man in just a decade on the farm, Ben's journey has been one of dedication and innovation, which is what makes Ben Smith the 2023 Milk Business Conference Young Producer of the Year. All right, thanks, Ty. Well, coming up, we dive into dairy markets and whether producers could see better margins in the year ahead. 
And later, we celebrate the good in the dairy industry, from the tops for tech to one of the best employees in the business, as our deep dive into the dairy industry continues. After a tough year last year, could the tide turn in 2024 when it comes to dairy? Ag Day's Michelle Rook talks with Brian Doherty from Markets Now. Joining us with Markets Now is Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. Brian, we want to talk about the milk markets, uh, nearby contracts hovering in that 15 and a half to $16 area. So we really haven't turned the corner yet there, have we? No, we haven't. And you really have to look at, as, at cheese as your leader or some other outline let's say butter like it was here early in the year when it led the way higher. None of those are leading the way higher right now. They're still continuing to languish. Do you think the low is in yet? Well, the cheese market would signal that the futures in milk probably hasn't seen its low. Uh, so you've got continued sluggish cheese. Now it has stabilized. Milk futures have stabilized the last several days. But this, the steeper trend is still down, which is reflective of, again, for some reason, we just didn't see that demand market cycle in. Maybe it's the combination of overseas, higher dollar today, you know, roughly and in a rough way. Let's call it 15 to 20 percent. I'd like to think 20 percent of our milk in some form or another heads overseas. Uh, we, we haven't seen that pick up with despite the dollar down the last couple of months, pick up to the level where you feel confident. I think it still goes back to producers. They had good production numbers last year with good prices and good tools to shift risk. What's your anticipation though? Is production going to come down? Is demand going to go up or what's, what's got that optimism in those back months? I, I think both. I think demand, demand cycles in at lower prices. It just takes time. Demand never comes rushing in. Demand is very pragmatic. It has to come down in the retail sector. That's a slow process. Consumer has to get more and more confident in, in pricing levels. Uh, with higher credit card debt, higher interest rates, though, it's going to take a little longer. Ultimately, though, the production side of thing, I think, does does narrow in. We've talked about this before, where in, in the uh, ever-changing dairy world, what you're looking at is an industry that's heavily capitalized and operations are getting bigger and bigger. So there's not quite that quick contraction that you might see with a smaller producer so it's going to take a little bit longer usually for, or in my mind, it's going to take a little bit longer to contract that herd down to levels that become more meaningful to, to upward trending prices. All right. Well, it's been a tough go. Let's hope we can see some improvement soon. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. That is Markets Now. Sixty-five employees, two milking sites, and three parlors milking 6,200 cows. It's a lot to oversee, but one man makes it look a lot easier thanks to adopting new technology. And that's why he was named the 2023 Milk Business Conference Leader in Technology Award winner. It's another busy day at Pagel's Ponderosa Dairy in Kewanee, Wisconsin. So we try to make everything as comfortable for our people and as comfortable for our animals as possible. A mantra the family has been following since the early days of this operation. In 1946, our grandfather returned from World War II and him and our grandma borrowed some money from a neighbor and we started with eight cows and some pigs and some chickens. Today, the farm milks thousands of cows across multiple locations and technology is a big part of the day to day. Our dad and our grandfather were both very aggressive using of technology. I love standing up here on the platform, watching the rotary go around. You see the cows milking, you see them chewing their cud. Anytime a cow is just standing there relaxed chewing her cud, you know she's feeling good. That, that makes you feel good. From the beginning, the goal and the dream of John Pagel was to be the best. So we wanted to grow, we wanted to make our farm uh, one of the top in the country. And so what we did is we, we uh, learned from the best people in the industry to do the best job we could do to take care of our cows the best that we could. That was John in 2017 when he was a finalist for Top Producer of the Year. A year later, he and son-in-law Steve Witzbollock and a pilot were lost in a plane crash in Indiana. His vision for the farm and his family lives on. The one thing that John, you know, helped teach us and that we're able to carry on is putting the cows first and taking the best care of, of the cows that we can. 
Chris Seidel joined Pagels Ponderosa as a nighttime milking technician in 1995. Today, he manages both the Pagel Ponderosa and Hilltop Farm dairies, overseeing three different parlors and 65 employees. Just anything that uh, will reduce stress and make them uh, more comfortable is the key for us. That means reducing headlock times, giving cows more time to walk and lay down, utilizing comfortable flooring, rubber mats, and clean bedding. So in the past, we would have people outside to separate the cows that we need, and now the sort gates we can type into the uh, dairy comp system. That talks to SCR, which talks to the sort gates, and we're able to automatically separate cows that we need. A system built by Parlor Boss and Sense Hub work together in the rotary to allow the team to perform many herd management tasks while cows are being milked. When we started with the SCR collar technology, we started with it and within three weeks, Chris goes, all right, JJ, we're getting rid of spray paint. And I'm like, let's not get the cart before the horse. He goes, it's the only way we'll know if it works. Out in the barn, temperature control systems help optimize temperature, keeping cows cool and fly free. We have people from all over the country and all over the world that come in and and we like to help educate the people that stop by the dairy and you know this is what's working for us and this isn't and try to be honest with them and, and share the technology. Constantly looking at technology and other industries is also helping the team to innovate. They recently implemented a pulse needle free disposable injector from the swine industry, looked at wastewater treatment plants in city municipalities and tried a bedding dryer from the sawmill and wood industries. When we do the work day in and day out, you tend to think it becomes pretty routine. And then when we have opportunities like this or an award for, for Chris and the team like this, it tells you that maybe it's a little bit special here. A special place with a special bond, willing to attempt the unknown. I see, it, I see a little bit of John and everything that goes on here still. Congratulations to Chris Seidel and the team at Pagels Ponderosa Dairy, winners of the 2023 Leaders in Technology Award. Technology is great, but you also need people to help make it happen. Coming up, meet this year's Milk Business Employee Excellence Award winner, next. The secret to running a smooth operating dairy business, of course, comes down to people. And as Farm Journal's Tyne Morgan reports, another of our Milk Business Conference winners learned everything about the dairy industry, starting from the bottom up. Lorenzo Vitorino came to America as a 15-year-old boy with his family. I came here in uh, 1991, uh, eight kids, five boys, three girls, and, uh, and my dad and my mom, of course, ten people. Yeah. He was put straight into high school where he says he faced bullying and then money got tight for his family. That's when he started working on a dairy farm. So I had to go work with one of the, the oldest brothers that is working here for Vance too. And very quickly... He found his calling. They asked me if I wanted to be the herdsman, and of course I was young, but I said yes. And there was a lot of challenges here that we went through, and uh, uh, it was a lot of hard work, but we did it. The operation owned by Vance Alum and the Alum family, Lorraine has now worked for the family for 34 years. Two years ago, Vance said, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing robots," you know. Robots? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> if I didn't have his buy-in, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing today, and we would not have, have transitioned as quickly because he put his heart and soul into to this process and, and making every startup better. Lorraine pivoting to learn everything he could about the robots as the operation made the transition to robotic milking, bringing a new system online every two months. When he thinks about startup, he's thinking about how can we be easy on the cows? What's the most comfortable for the cows? But it's not just the cows that benefit from Lorraine's years of experience. It's really the entire crew. Loren is like family to us. Um, he does a tremendous job. He, he treats this facility as if he owns it. Um, a lot of times if I find something out that's going on from the guys at the dairy before he does, <laughs> he's not happy about it because he takes so much pride in that this is his baby to run and he's, he's just always there for us. I feel like Lorena has kind of the unique ability to have really high standards, which could seem daunting to a lot of workers, but he also has the ability to kind of get the respect from the guys, keep things fun, 
keep people motivated. And I always tell them, hey, you, you learn and maybe someday you have an opportunity. I don't want to lose you, but hey, if you do, because I did it too for myself, to, for my family, to benefit my family. And I never hold nothing back. If they want to learn, I'm here to help them. Lorraine was presented with the opportunity to start his own dairy a couple years ago, but he said no, happy to stay right where he is. He, he's very proud um, of what he does and how he does it. Um, he's, he just wants it done right, and if it, his name's going to be associated to it, it needs to be done the best it can be. He doesn't do things halfway. And he says he's humbled to be a Milk Business Award winner. Well, that means a lot because this was a team, not only one person. You're not going to be able to do this one person. Congratulations, Lorraine. This is well-deserved. The team you've put together is tremendous. And Ashley and I and my mom and dad, Jim and Carol, owe a lot to you. And we really appreciate all this, all that you've done for our family and the success of, of County Line and what was James Allendary before. So thank you very much, Lorraine. Congratulations to this year's Milk Business Award winner for employee excellence, Lorraino Vitorino of County Line Farm in Denair, California. All right, thanks, Tyne. Well, coming up, building longevity into the dairy industry. It can be a challenge these days, but one South Dakota operation has been doing it for generations. An inside look at their business that's been named one of the top in the country. Next. Less than a month, three producers will be named finalists for Top Producer of the Year. It's an award given out annually at the Top Producer Summit taking place this year in Kansas City. Now, one of the finalists last year hails from South Dakota, a growing area for the dairy industry where one operation embraces a tradition of quality, hard work, and family. Modak Dairy in Goodwin, South Dakota, each day, a reflection of a rich history that dates back to 1894 carried now by four generations, including today's owners, Jim and Greg Bowes. When we were first started out, we had 30 cows in a tie stall barn. From there, Modak grew first to 300 head and then expanded into the current facility built in 2008. We increased at that time to 2,000 cows. Uh, since then, uh, since 2008, we uh, expanded into a uh, heifer facility. They pride themselves on producing high quality milk with a total milk solid content of 8.6% used for cheese manufacturing. Greg's brother Jim oversees crop production, which provides nearly all of the feed for the operation. It was around that 4,000 acres we farm and around 1,800 is, is uh, corn and then we run about uh, 11, 1,200 of alfalfa. Crops are produced sustainably using GPS and prescription farm data. The dairy recycles their liquid manure and injects it into the soil to cut input costs. We don't buy a lot of commercial fertilizer, most of it. We spend $50,000 a year on commercial fertilizer. The rest is all, this through, goes through the cattle and comes about, back out as a, as a byproduct for a good product for the land. They also plant cover crops to improve soil health and provide additional feed for younger stock. The fifth generation is represented by Greg and Julie's son, Jacob. He manages a first-in-the-nation calf and heifer facility that they built back in 2021, which condensed 17 production sites into one location. Modak has continued to innovate through their company structure and enterprising in each area. But Moe's gives the real credit for their success to their people. 40-some families is what I like to say. They're families to us. We have people that are husbands and wives, kids, daughters, uncles and aunts. They're all working here somewhere on this operation. We have vendors that are on here, even our hoof trimmers are on here, our breeders. Um, there's, there's employees that have been here almost 40 years on this board. And that's, there's something to be said about that too. It's, we try and take care of them and, and give them the lifestyle that we have. A big part of Modak's legacy, provide agricultural growth for the community and opportunities for their family as the sixth generation prepares to walk in their footsteps. Congratulations to Modak Dairy, a finalist for the 2023 Top Producer of the Year. 
And the next top producer summit is just around the corner. As we said, this year it's in Kansas City from February 5th through the 7th. If you want to take part, make sure to check out the events tab on agweb.com. And that's all the time we have this morning. Sure glad you tuned in from all of us here at AgDam, Clinton Griffiths. Have a great day.